motherfucking hustler. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I gotta put on my thing. I have no makeup. Don't do okay, this. Okay, well, come, come back. No, come back. right here. I go right here. Hold on. You cute without makeup. What's good, uh -oh. Kevin? What's you like on? my hair? <laughs> what the is freak, this, Joseph? What the is hell? This point? Is this like a thriller video? Shut, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No. Dun, 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 dun. This yeah. is this is a look for a it's it's fashion baby don't worry we do this okay <laughs> so you think What's I'm gonna get my dream man like this <laughs> I'm telling you the first thing I thought of was Michael Jackson's Thriller man I I, I paid my way from Napa College with Michael Jackson no nah, it's because the filter got these eyes on it I hate this but oh. look <laughs> I rather listen to answer your question I rather have I rather be a feeling because niggas. You could do all of that. You could, they can remember your sound, your voice, your fragrance, all that shit. I like when a nigga love how I feel. You get what I'm saying? That's what I've been told. It feel real good to see on Florida. You know what I'm saying, Kevin? Uh -huh. I guess. That grip in. I'm, okay, the question, the, question I, the question I was asking is, do you ladies want men to make you feel good or do you want better outcomes? See, that's oh, when it comes to men, you got to have both because you can't be having no good outcomes and then a dick trash. I don't like Oh, Lord, Emma. Have you, mean, been, I, I, have you been drinking? Oh, no. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. No. Okay, listen. The outcome and all that stuff is good, but I'm going to always go searching elsewhere if I'm not getting pleased, if that makes sense. If well, you're not pleasing me, you could be the best man in the world. You could, I could have flowers by my bedside. You could take me shopping from here to motherfucking Italy, whatever, if the feeling is not there. And you could develop a feeling too. You could develop a feeling but for me. Like but, but what I'm saying is today, now see, first off, you're in a different group. You have a different life than a lot of women. And today, women are being told things, like in a church, if you go to church, I grew up in a church and there was actually Old Testament, New Testament. There were sins and there were things you should do or should not do. Today, everything goes in the church. Okay. And that's why the men are gone. So what I'm saying is women are being told what they want to make them feel good, but they're not getting the outcomes. You can get the outcomes that most women can't get. Your eyes are messing with me in this damn filter. I don't, this I'm is some sorry. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, <man. laughs> okay, don't look at my eyes. Just keep talking. <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm gonna bring somebody. Now, what are you doing? Are you actually getting ready for a, a shoot or something? Yes. Uh huh. I'll be back in LA in about three or four weeks. Good. I'm gonna get on to some okay. next. Look. I'm gonna connect with you. I, I and, want to uh, connect with you too. So please be sure. So my hair stop. She love you. Go yeah, on. yeah. We we will do that. I'm gonna be back in LA in three weeks. I gotta come out there to do. Uh, I don't want to say what I'm doing, but it's gonna be dope. I'll talk to y'all later. Have All fun, right, sis. Kevin. Love bye you. Bye bye. Love you too. Bye bye. Why do I need to talk about white women? I mean, I feel like you could talk about all races of women. I mean, I understand that you in your first, first of all, first of all, how old are you? I'm 27. Okay, go ahead. I feel like, you know, um, I think it'll be better if you talk about other races of women because I feel like as a black woman, most black women feel like you're targeting us, even though, you know, that's perception. Everybody takes things and looks at things differently, but that, that, that's what a lot of people perceive you to be doing, to be targeting black women and down talking them. Well, so I'm that, just suggesting, so, wait, you so, can't cut me off. Oh no, first of all, yes, I actually can. Okay, this you can't. Can. Oh, yeah, oh, no, 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 This is not my, no, You're no, not no, going to no. over talk me. Kick, kick rocks, but kick, kick, kick rocks. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. Well, I don't know what, I don't know where you think that plays. And see, that's the point. You don't want anybody to target you. Everyone in this country has had their behavior evaluated. A black woman, and Sister Shaharazad Ali said that back in 1988, 89. So in other words, you'll take all the praise, but you don't want a, why, why do so many sisters not want a critical examination of the, real, of the reality? It's coming whether you like it or not. And there's some of the most disingenuous, hypocritical crap I hear of. Why don't you, if, instead of you saying, why don't you do this? Why don't you just act better? Was there a reason to come on here and do that? 
All I asked you was who you are, how old you are, and I let you speak. But to come into my program, my platform, and tell me what I can and cannot do at 27 years old, that's why we talk about who we talk about. Thank you guys for proving the point. Every time you try to tell me what I should and should not do, all I do is have a conversation with who shows up and the reality is what it is. That's what I do. I don't make it up. I don't edit it in real time. I just have a conversation. The first conversation was with a black woman and it went fine. The next conversation with a black woman goes off the rails. What's the difference? They were both black women. The problem is staring most people in the mirror. No, you're not coming back home. Nope, I get uh, the problem is staring most people in the mirror. So um, that's what that be. All right, what's your sexual marketplace value? And it is not, N-O-T, not how much you make. It's not how much you make, it's not your education. If the when if when I ask you what you bring when a man asks you what you bring to the table and you start talking about your, your college degree, your income, your education, that's not what men really value first. The nerd. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you go do it on your platform? Hmm. <clears throat> I'll ask this question too. Since over we're here, who can talk about, who can discuss black women? It seems like the people who discuss black women, the only thing it seems that you want to hear is the men who tell you you're queens, goddesses, the mother of the earth, Oshun, Osiris, just, you want the praise. Are you above reproach? Because that's what it's starting to look like, that no one can say anything to you. No man. Even if a man just has a conversation, who the nerve are you? Who are you? That won't work, folks. Ladies, that won't work. It may make it'll work to end a it'll it'll work to end an argument, but you know what it won't do? It won't change the fact that in our community, right as as us, one in four will marry. That ain't gonna change no matter who talks about it. At what point do we talk about it? Or is it just better to stick your head in the sand? Why don't you do better instead of instead of worrying about <laughs> about this? Instead of worrying about who talks about what, why don't you improve overall? That's what black men had to do. The world talks about black men from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And black men had to take it. Cops, America's Most Wanted, popular media, radio, daytime TV, newspapers, magazines, inundated with negative black male depictions. And black men just had to take it. But then black men, just, just like most men, said, all right, I can't change this, but what I can change is who I am. And how I go out there, black men raise themselves to being 51% are single and childless. 64% are in the middle class. Black men are doing far better the last 20 or 30 years, but where are the counterparts to go ahead and build anything? Counterparts don't want to have anybody discuss it. Oh, you just want praise. Sorry, you got plenty of people to praise you. I'm going to have the conversations as they happen. If praise is due, I give praise. But if, if correction is due or, or, or a different point of view is given, I'm going to give that too. And if that's not what you want, don't come. Go to the place that tells you you're the best thing ever. You are the green goddess, mother earth, and you deserve to be deified and such and so forth and go there. What you're going to find is there'll be a man standing up there saying it and then the entire audience will be filled with women and children. There won't be any men there. Well, not any heterosexual single men. So let's get to do it. Sexual marketplace value, what do you rank? What is your value? What is your number, ladies? How do you know? How do you know what your number is? Is your number accurate? Why is this important? It's important because if your number is inaccurate, can't see you. If this number is, if, it, if your number is inaccurate, 
your asking price may be is going to likely be too high. If your number is too low, you're not going to be asking for enough. Ladies, are you asking for too much, not enough, or is it just right? For what it is you say you want. Are you asking for too much, not enough, or is it just right? How do we get to a middle ground of having better outcomes? That's the real question. How do we get to a better outcome of, of having a middle ground of having better outcomes? As the year progresses, I talked about I'm going to start doing things differently here and here. I'm starting to have more people interviewing. I'm actually working to get, uh, let me see if he responded. I think brother, uh, let me see. Let me see. I don't want to say something ahead of time. Just a second. All good. I have my team's contact you. I'm going to hit you here. Cool. Um, guys, I'm looking to bring in other other men on the platform so you can hear it come from them and other women. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to start having a middle ground conversation. I don't want people to believe uh, agree with everything I say. It's not the point. What I do want to do is I want to see more, more men who say they want to be married, children, family, legacy. I want more of the men that say they want this stuff to have women that want to be on the same page with them. That's the outcome. Like-minded men, like-minded women who want an outcome. I'm not trying to change everybody. That's why it ain't about me. So saying you this, you that, you this, you that. What are you going to do? What's the outcome you want? And if you and if you want to work towards that goal, getting better outcomes for men and the women they want, then I'm with it. But this platform is men first. It's about helping the men get the outcomes they want. And part of what the men want is they want women who are wanting to actually get with them and build a life. And unfortunately, like it or not, men are saying that there are not enough women who are wanting to do that thing. So we got to start from one thing. Well, ladies, why are you, I asked this on, on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> Can you explain why you're single without blaming men? Why are you where you are today? Why are you where you are right now without blaming men? That's a question for any woman in the West. Why are things the way they are? Why are you where you are? If you're the freest, most educated uh, women with the most options, why is it that so many women are choosing to be utterly alone? Is it really a choice? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to post that one back. Uh, that's that three. Yeah, I can't tell who that is. Bingo. Here we go. That happened. I'm sorry, the comment was off. That's wrong. Yeah. So just know anybody who wants to get on the platform, that stuff that they will ask someone tried to pull, don't try to get your five minutes of fame or your 15 seconds of fame. It ain't going to work too well. I'm not doing this to have, have an argument with anybody. It's to have a conversation. You can't have a conversation and think, don't cut me up. Do it on your own page. So here we go. I got to give her a chance to get back. <laughs> Here we go. I got to restart this. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. It's stuck. All right, it's stuck. So, shit. We'll try it that way. Maybe that'll unstick it. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. How old are you? I'm 26. 26. What do you want to discuss today? Which well, topic? Well, you just asked, you know, why Why are you single without blaming a man? Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to just answer on my point of view as to why I'm single. Go ahead. Um, I would say initially, I, I feel like we always tend to blame the other person, but being that I've been having time to reflect, I've noticed that I have a codependency 
And okay. um, I feel like the person that I was with, they showed me and told me what they wanted and they didn't want a relationship. But I stuck around because of my low self-esteem, because of things that I lacked within myself. Mm -hmm. Self, you know, self-love. So I allowed things that weren't really fulfilling to me or made me happy or, you know, um, I basically settled because of the things that I lacked within myself. So that's, that's, you know, so I came to a place where I was like, you know, I was unfair to set expectations on you because I already knew what you wanted. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And that's pretty much what I said to the person, you know, okay. I, 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 for a long time, I was like, you didn't step up. You weren't like you, mm -hmm. you didn't show me enough affection or enough love. You didn't show me that you wanted me. And it was like, why, what was wrong with me that I felt like I had to sit there and say, pick me, love me. You know? How long, how long, how long ago was this relationship? uh it's been over now for like six months okay and how long were you guys together two years two or three two two um have you gotten into any counseling or therapy to I... deal with oh. no okay um why not um because i I've, I've i've um for a while i've been through a lot of things in my life and um one of the things that has helped me is my spirituality and my relationship with God. So I kind of feel like that's enough for me, but- God I, made counselors. Right. So I realized that God made counselors just like he made doctors. And I feel like I, I do need to tap into, um, you know, sitting down with someone who, you mm -hmm. know, can help me understand more so why I think the way I think. Um, because I've been through traumatic situations and I feel like those traumatic situations that I've experienced kind of made me feel like I wasn't worthy of certain things. So for example, you speak a lot about like high value men, right? And I'm a woman, I'm 26 and you know, I, I own two businesses. I'm a founder in one and then a co-founder in the other. So, I mean, it's building up, it's, it's, it's brand new, it's a startup and I'm not where I feel like I wanna be yet, but let's just say- As far as what? As far as like income and like my lifestyle, things like that, you know, I want more mm. for myself. What and, is life um, about? What is life about? Mm -hmm. Happiness, right? Love, mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. What? People. Okay. So I was gonna let you talk, and you were gonna tell me how you're so busy and this and that, and my business is not where it was, so I don't have time. Life is about people. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat down with somebody eighty plus years old in like a retirement community or something like that? One thing they really never talk about is I wish I made more money. Or I wish I'd have worked harder. They they talk about the things they regret, and it's usually about relationships. Yeah, it's true. So if you know you're self-described codependent, and you're not going to counseling, you're just gonna what? Throw your codependency into business? Okay, then guess what'll happen? You'll wake up and you'll be smack dab in the danger zone, and you still won't be any better off for the next potential person that you run into. Mm. You're just, see, like it or not, women have to get the major parts of their life together earlier. Do you want children? I do. Do you have any children? I do not. All right, well, I'm not the creator, but before, you need to have the, your children before age 35, before geriatric pregnancy attaches. And usually most OBGYNs will tell you you need to have your children, period, by age 42. That's crazy that we've been talking about that, but it's because so many women are postponing the things that make life worth living, people, family, community. Mm. So I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Do you, when do you think it's, when do you think is, is the right time to, move on or build with someone new. I know I need to work on myself more because I I have, as you mentioned, like, you know, therapy would be a good thing for me. But at what point do you think would be a good time? Because I'm gonna be honest, like I met someone and I would like to consider them a high value man. And I just feel like, I don't wanna say I'm not worthy of it, but how can I- See? Well, in gen there's a, the general benchmark is a third of the time you are with somebody is how long it takes to heal. That's a general benchmark. But there is no scientific formula for it except this. Once you can take accountability for what you were and you really become indifferent about that person, 
See, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. But you just said what I said earlier. You're 26 and most young women, especially most young attractive women, move as if men will never run out. You do realize there's gonna come a time very soon that men are gonna stop really approaching you like they do. Yeah, I do. So if you run into a suitable man right now and you're the unsuitable or unfit one, you can't really sit back at 35 or 40 years old and say you didn't have an opportunity. Mm. So I asked what's life about and it's, it's not about all the stuff you're talking about. That's, that's important. But is that what really makes life worth living? No, it's not. Right. How many, do you have any siblings? I do. How many? A uh, total is six of us. Uh, how many children do you, does your mother have? She has five. All from the same man? No. How many fathers? Three. Does she marry any of them? Yeah, she married uh, one of them. Uh, but- was- was your father was the, was was the man she married? No. Is she still married? No. All right. So, arguably, you didn't have stable relationship model. No. Nope. But you still did have family of sorts. Where where are you at in the birth order? Uh, I'm the third. Oh, you're like a middle child. Around. That starts to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um therapy therapy i always recommend therapy because see when i was your age i had something that most people didn't have i i had just got over chemotherapy and cancer oh at 21 years old when i was ready to take on the world the universe had other plans and i had to stop sit down have a tumor the size of my foot removed from my abdomen to get uh eight months of chemotherapy and realize that guess what you can die it makes you it makes you reevaluate. You're still living life like you got plenty of time. Like there's no reason there's no real hurry. So if you really if the whatever whatever guy you believed in, if he said, guess what? You're only gonna live till 40 years old. Do you think you'd still be postponing therapy and relationships? Mm-mm. Why? Because I would I I, I want to experience having my own family because it's because it's more important than the jobs and the businesses i mean that's stuff that you need to support that but what's more important is that right and you know oh sorry so that's all i'm saying is don't poke most people fear therapy because they don't really want to it's kind of like i know how to it's kind of like if you ever drove a broke down car you know kind of how the pulls to the left you have to pump three times to do this you know all the routines Mm -hmm. but if you get somebody a new car they got to learn a new routine after therapy you're gonna have to learn a new routine you spend 26 years of your life becoming the person you are but the thing is has it been an enjoyable 26 years have you do you like do you like your life i was i would like to say that I like how far I've I've, I've come because as I mentioned, when I was 17, I went through a very traumatic situation too for five years. And I believe that that's what kind of like, um, I remember going through that situation and telling my dad, oh, I don't think a man will ever love me. I feel like, um, I don't know. Like I just, I think a lot of my um, feeling like- Imagine, so by comparison, you're better than you were, but do you like your life overall? It depends on, I mean, it, honestly, would you want a daughter to have your life? Yeah. Traumas yeah. and all. What is it? Traumas and all. No. Okay. So what I'm saying is we get to choose our life. We don't get to choose what happens to us. We get to choose how we, how we handle it. So at 26, you can do everything you talked about doing and get your head together to understand your issues, whatever they are, start working on them, spin that plate, spin the plate of businesses and spin the plate of relationships. You don't, you don't get a chance to do them one at a time. Mm. You don't get to do them one at a time. 
Uh, therapist just told me I'd make a good therapist. <laughs> yeah, I'm mad. I'm, I'm talk to you after this too, uh, Miss Thing. Um, seriously, you know, I I, I don't want to delve into what happened, but I, I don't want you to to waste the next. You're 26. It's very critical that you decide what you want. Like if you want to be a wife, that's why I have. So it's it's not to make women pissed off. It's like the yellow light that says you either need to stop or speed up, but you can't just keep doing it. And at this point, when you're 80 years old, do you want to have a husband, children, grandchildren, maybe great grandchildren? What do you want? I, I honestly like I'm I'm a like. I don't, I don't, enjoy, and this is why I feel like I'm like so codependent because I don't enjoy being single. Like I'm not the person. That's not codependent. That's human. Oh, okay, fine. So it's normal. Some people make it seem like, oh, that's weird. You don't like to be single. Like being single is fun. For well, me, I, no, I don't think. Are, are these single women? Yeah. Mm -mm. See, the problem is women your age are being told by women your age that let's just go out and have hot girl summer when. 50, 60 years ago, women your age, fun was being a wife and a mother and living and building in a community. Because all the stuff that your friends are calling fun now, eh. yeah. I mean, you can you can have one or two good years of that, but it's time to it's time to uh, graduate and move on to the next thing. I said this before, and your friends may not mean it, but single women keep women single. Mm. And if you know you want a a family, children, and a husband, you can have that and the things you say you want, but you have to prioritize it because if you don't focus on what it is you want downstream, that time will pass. I know plenty of women who really want to be wives and have children, but now their options are limited because they were not given the information that they needed to do something about it. These kind of conversations weren't around even three years ago. So therapy, understand yourself, realize that we're all jacked up. You just got to find somebody whose crazy matches are crazy. <laughs> find somebody who you can uh, work with, respect, build with, and move on down the path. And if your friends uh, who said that you're codependent or whatever, they want something different, Love them, move them on down the path. You can still be friends with them, but you need a different kind of group of friends that want to that want a lifestyle to support you because it will be very hard to be a woman who wants to be married with children with a bunch of friends who want to be hot girls. You're going to have to be in a, a, a community and a culture and a, and, a, and a neighborhood that supports what you want. And see, you sound to me like you'd be happier over in a relationship with a man that meet your needs, ideals, uh, have a family, an extended family and all those stuff, then all the other stuff you're talking about, the business and everything else, just goes on top of that. I'll say this and I'm gonna wrap it up. Any decision made in fear, scarcity or lack tends to be a wrong-headed decision. If it's always fear-based, if it's always scarcity or lack-based, you, you need to have, you need to rethink that. That's why therapy is so good because you have somebody to talk these things through and they're not your friends. Your friends are meant to be friends. The therapists are meant to help you get on down the path, okay? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye, most, most, first, most, first, most, most first sessions are free, so don't wait. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, most therapists give a, most, Many therapists give an initial consultation for free. So don't let money be a reason why you don't seek uh, a professional opinion. <clears throat> I'll turn the comment back on. Um, look, why, why <laughs> just because you choose to be a wife and a mother does not mean you cannot still be uh, the same professional kind of woman you thought you would be. It's about choices and trade-offs, folks. You know, that's why it's it's hard to speak 
It's hard to, it's hard to, um, let me see. It's hard to cover all bases in, in general talking points. But at the end of the day, whatever it is you want, do that. Let me see. It's hard to cover all bases in, in general talking points. Hello, you got to turn the TV off in the background. Um, you got to turn the TV off in the background. I, yeah, I think it's off now. How old are you? Me, I'm 25. Okay. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. What do you want to talk about? Um, I want to talk about how to make these concepts more digestible. Um, for my age group. Um, I date someone who's older and he is the one who really brought me to your uh, your content. And it took me a while to really accept what you're saying. Um, I know that I'm a rather sensitive person. So a lot of times I'm like, ah, he's so mean. But like after seeing how women respond to you and really catching on to the patterns, I'm like, okay. And so it's taken me a while, but now I really kind of see. When you, say di- when you say digestible, what do you mean? Um, I think that women in my generation, especially people who want to be married and have successful relationships, have a lot to learn and a lot to gain from the things that you say, but get so caught up in maybe what comes off as insulting or, I don't know, intimidating that they miss the rest of what they would otherwise agree with or see as valuable information. Okay. Uh, it's it's meant to do that. Yeah? Yeah, because your generation has been told you can have everything and there are no limits. Mm-hmm. And your world is your oyster. It's called a pattern interrupt. Mm-hmm. It's meant to shock you and get your attention to realize that guess what? You've been lied to. You can't have it all. You have to make choices. Uh, there's a movie called The Matrix. Came out in 99, 2000. I don't know if you watched it before. My my older boyfriend showed it to me during the pandemic. So it's all right. right. Yeah. So when that man, when Neo was given a choice between the blue pill, which is the good feeling, go back to sleep and believe whatever you want, or the red pill. Do you remember what happened to him? The shock yeah. of that system? Waking up, oh shit. But in order to become who he needed to become, he needed to wake up. Mm-hmm. If the media messages have been telling women, don't worry about it, postpone marriage later, you can later and you can do whatever you want, something so forth. Why, why do you think that message exists? Because one, it keeps more consumers in the market. Two, mm-hmm. women spend more than men. The messages for are for the 73% of women who spend the dollar. So. I get it. The message is shocking. It's because you guys are more asleep than any other generation. My generation didn't realize how asleep we were. Then the next generation is more asleep than that. And the next generation is more asleep than that. My generation is just now starting to come around and say, you know what? We didn't know these things. So the need to shock your generation into reality with cosmopolitan lying to you ladies to sell you tampons, vacation <laughs> homes, pianos, and everything else, while those women were married and had their kids, is important. Mm-hmm. So I have moderated my message quite a bit. I moderated it quite a bit. Uh, and I do my level best to try to have one-on-one conversations. But if you think of the shock as a result of how bad the problem is have you mm-hmm. ever had to take a have you ever been in a hospital before yeah a broken bone or anything i had a surgery i've never broken a bone uh did you have to get anest- did you have to actually go under yeah did they give you pain shots and everything afterwards mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay the painkiller they gave you after the surgery matched the level of pain you had mm-hmm. that's the strength of the painkiller But as you got better, you went from strong narcotics, opioids, to lesser, to eventually to Tylenol to or to ibuprofen, to where you could just kind of get over it. But as you healed, the strength of the medication decreased. 
-hmm. it was but the strength of the painkiller was a response to how hurt you were yeah that's what my message is i reflect what i get back mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah yeah I, I think it makes sense that's why you're able to have like more successful conversation with someone who maybe like gets it compared to the people who i think really could use the message more but i feel like they miss it it's it's almost like i feel like you are preaching to the choir because the women who come on here and have unsuccessful conversations with you i feel like are the ones who probably have the most to gain and so i'm just wondering like you know are the people who don't have somebody to keep showing them you know whether it's your content or anyone else like you can't be the only one doing this like it's in the music it's in the media it's in how we're raised you know like i have my own story about how i feel like my mother's decisions have like mm -hmm. impacted my lives or i see my friends who were raised by single parents single women you know i'm starting to see the patterns myself but i just feel like you know it can't just be a small group of people who tune in and get it like if it's everywhere how like i just feel like it's a really well, big problem that one person but, like your ex. But, but, but that's true. And I didn't go looking for this. Yeah. Like I said, Monday, I'm the hero you got. I may not be the one you want, but I'm the one you got. But look at how far it's come since May of last year. It's the, it's, it's, it's getting out. And let me, let me back up. Number one, the person I'm talking to is the person I'm talking to. But what you don't see is the people who are at home saying, you know what? I didn't realize what my thoughts sounded like coming out of someone else's mouth until I heard it. Yeah. I get letters from women saying that, oh my God, I saw myself in her and I did not like it. So it's a teaching experience. That's one path. Another path is just like most, it shocked me, it bothered me, but then they keep coming back and it's like you know i didn't like you but then i finally got over it and it's not just me because you said your boyfriend brought you here well that's one person who's been affected by the message mm -hmm. i'm just the person who's on in front right now but i don't need to be in front i just want more conversations to be had so we can get to better outcomes um i said this a long time ago it's really not about me um, but I take and I and I have taken that so people who will watch, you know, I have taken that into consideration. People like, well, the tone, the tone, can you moderate the tone? I don't know how often you watch, but there are times where I'm really struggling to try to keep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just you touch on sensitive things. Like shortly before I joined the live, mm -hmm. I was having an argument about like, well, not an argument, but I was debating with him like, I ate because <laughs> you right. earlier you're talking about the uh you know divided by your body and your face and i'm like mm -hmm. well so i mean it's just you, you sometimes have it, talking about things that are polarizing especially for the individual yes and, and and the thing is unfortunately we have to find a way especially in our community to have conversations about sensitive polarizing topics because if we don't, we won't get any better. I mean, I've, I'm an image consultant, for Christ's sakes. I'm an image and style and fragrance guy. And I have people from that side like, why do you talk about relationships? They talk about them too. They just don't get as deep as I do. Uh, they would not dare to talk about some of the topics. And they certainly wouldn't inject race into it. And I've been doing this for a long time. And it's just now starting to catch on. But sometimes when you you don't necessarily pick what your purpose is and apparently i have a talent for it um so what i'm looking to do is have more people realize that it's not here to tear anything down or hurt anybody it's actually here to help men get the outcomes they want and what they really is is to get women to start to understand that we're different and we get nowhere without each other yeah so just like you and I had this conversation, how long have you been watching my content? Um, probably for the past three months. And I will say that I can thank you because um, some of what I struggle with in the relationship that I'm in is um, the person who I date is an entrepreneur and I date and I'm in a really corporate job. So for me, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. I have this image of what I want in life. I'm a little bit young at 25, just having graduated and have this mindset of, you know, I worked hard, I should get this, I deserve this. And dating an entrepreneur, you know. Uh, delayed gratification, can't spend the money just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or just, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's, well, here's this idea that they're working towards and I don't like mm -hmm. know like how feasible is this? Or, you know, like I, I have a lot of certainty on my end, but there's uncertainty on their end. And just feeling like, you know, see people. Well, let me give you, let me give you a different standpoint. First of all, imagine you were able you've been watching me for three months but a year ago you probably would have thrown something at the tv uh -huh. that's a testament to how far we've come uh -huh. that you can even get to the point to where you can even contact me because a year ago it was like who the fuck is that i would shut it down but going to corporate america let me say something i come from corporate america and the, one of the things i realized in my career is i sold in excess of 45 million dollars of products and services and I thought I was safe. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that after the 70% weight, I realized that I'm really not safe because every job I worked at, people were getting fired. There were downsizing, there was bankruptcies. And the longer you work for a company, the more you cost. They mm -hmm. can bring somebody in. Working for someone is actually the most vulnerable thing to do long term. Mm -hmm. So, you being corporate and him being an entrepreneur, how can you how can you take your corporate structure knowledge to help him improve his <laughs> entrepreneurial way of doing things? And then how can you take his entrepreneurial knowledge to learn how to get away? See, then that's the difference between you being corporate and him being an entrepreneur. Now at least the conversation is being had. Because yeah. eventually, what what what's your what vertical, what industry are you in? Um, I'm in deals. Okay. With that deals, sales. So no, so mergers and acquisitions. So M and A, I'm, M and A. Okay. Yeah. So most people M and A start because I'm a professional salesperson. So M and A, consulting and angel investors, people I I do consults with daily. Um, you guys complement each other more than anything else. It's just. Can you work together and build for a lifetime? And that's exactly where we're at. You know, I sometimes feel insecure about where his financial future is headed just because again, it's whatever he like, you know, whatever he does is what it is. But he often tells me like, you're in a position to help me get to where we're trying to go. Like, mm -hmm. he like- Are you a Christian? But, Are you a, Were you raised Christian? I was raised Christian. Are you familiar with uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes? Mm-hmm. Bishop T.D. Jakes, often talks about when he was starting out in West Virginia. He's an extremely successful man now, mm -hmm. very rich. Mm -hmm. But listen to the stories about how poor he was coming up. And he told a story about when the car broke down and, and the car was about ha having his wife walk with him. And as broke as they were in rural West Virginia, she still did her duty and responsibility to her husband who was down bad. That's why she gets anything she wants now. <laughs> See, he, you're the security now. Yeah. He's the risk, but it's not a risk. He's the investment. When, when let's assume you guys get married and he starts a business and it fails because most entrepreneurs fail one or two three times before something works. Yeah. But then when it works and you've been doing your thing for 15 or 20 years, you reach that glass ceiling or oh, whatever. There's an ability to come and take these skill sets and take it over here to where you employ your own children and employ your own community to where you have the option to stay here or there. That's actually the, the smartest way. One in, one out. Because then you're not beholden to anybody. Yeah. And see the at the and the beginning of having all this conversation is having a woman and a man sit down and talk about important things up front that are contentious, that are scary, that are sensitive, in a way to where you feel safe and he feels safe to have these conversations and everybody's not holding their cards close to their chest and not willing to trust anybody with information. 
this program has shown how to have difficult conversations and it's a skill we did not learn yeah so yep. i think it, i think this is where we are right now and people will see the conversation we had and they'll learn from it and you know we'll get better but we're still gonna make mistakes i'm human i'm gonna fail a lot but we're gonna fail moving forward and you know uh how long have you guys been seeing one another uh, about a year and a half. We met on LinkedIn, so that's a pretty funny story. Time to go ahead and pull the trigger. Yeah, and interestingly <laughs> enough, I've, we've actually both seen you in person, so we're like okay. in your backyard. So there you go. Time to go ahead and pull the trigger and formalize it. See, see, as I, I was, I don't want to say the names of the people I was just talking to, but they're black business people. And I think we need to hear more from our business class and less from our, no offense to our entertainers, musicians, athletes, entertainers, we need to hear more from our business class so we understand the investment. It's not risk, it's investment. Um, it's only risk if you don't plan on being there the long term. It's an investment if you plan on being there. Investment in being in business? Yeah. Well, like you mentioned his business. Right. Whatever, even even from failures, trust me, go back and watch some of my videos from, go back to the earliest videos and look at how shitty they were. <laughs> but there was all investment to get here. Mm -hmm. But I would not have had the benefit of the ROI now if I had not been willing to fail in public. The, they keep pulling my pictures and rows to me left and right, failures. But what they don't talk about is what I'm talking about now and the results. And I don't worry about it because I knew back then why I was doing what I'm doing now. And see, that's the power when a man and a woman really get on the same page and start talking about practical stuff, pragmatic stuff. That's our true nature. CIA, FBI complimenting one another versus I got this, you got that, and I'm good, you good. Yeah, we both be good, but we're not great alone. We're better together. So appreciate it, sis. Have a good one. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So, um, look, um, you will never hear me try to act like I'm a messiah or I know everything. I know what I know, and I stay heavily in my lane. When it's time to start talking about finance and this and that and real estate, I'll bring on professionals, and I'll shut up. I talk about what I know, but when it's time to bring it up, and as this continues to grow, we have to learn how to have contentious conversations in good faith. And the more we see that practice and model, I think more often than not, people will learn how to do it. I have faith that most people I have faith that most people can learn how to have a better outcome. You know, there are extremes on either side. But for the most part, um, but for the most part, I think that everybody wants to have the outcomes they want to have. It's just the question is, the hell is she here? Can we start moving? Let me, let me say this. Can we start moving in on offense instead of defense? Can we start moving in fear and start moving in, in, in possibility? And see, that's why I keep on playing the PhD and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, sure, there are a lot of women, there are women out here who are getting it done. But getting it done by yourself is a different life than getting it done when you have somebody uh, and a family and a support system. Whatever your choices are, they're your choices, but you should at least be able to make the choice to do it by yourself if you choose to, or the choice to marry. That's why I said, I'm a feminist. I know people get pissed off, but feminine, feminist really just means women have the ability to make a choice. That's what it comes down to. All right, let's see. Turn the comments back on and see who next. Oh, there was a request up there. Uh, okay, I don't see who that is. If I don't see your face, I can't let you in. Uh, and to try to make the message more palatable, yeah, always. It's always a work in progress. I'll never be the one saying, I, I got the answer. Mm -mm. You got to respond to the market. Only a fool ignores his market. 
I'd be a fool to sit back and say, no, I'm gonna just do it this way. No, no, too shysty. They're like too shysty. She got her finger. Uh oh. Okay. Um. I can't see this though. So if you want to jump on, let me know. What's all of these shysties? <laughs> bruh, bruh, bruh. Have we talked? I, don't, I think we have. I'm not sure. Hmm. Too shysty. All right, so here we go. What do you rank? How do you rank yourself? How do you know what your SMB is? Um, ask. Ask, 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 ask some men. Honestly, ask guys. If you really want to know, ask. Um, and yes, there's a subjective component, but in general, you know, in general, Eights, nines, and tens, or eights, nines, and tens, wherever they are. Adjustable sixes, the ability to go from cute to pretty, the most flexible category. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Man, my wind is high. How old are you? 29. I'll be 30 in June. So what are we talking about? Um. Well, I joined your live later, but um, I just wanted to give a from a women's perspective um, in agreement with you, like maybe like I heard the other young lady saying a lot of women find your um, your delivery to be harsh. And it's mm -hmm. I just saw, I saw you on Shade Room and literally I cannot go into a room where there's not, like if I meet up with my friends, if I meet up with my sisters, your name comes up. And so I like, oh, God God. damn. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been funny. I have four children and I'm happily married mm -hmm. and my husband and I sit and listen to you and uh you know we la most of it's laughter I think the mm -hmm. the whole uh you have three lives and you're on live number one I think that was like maybe a week or so ago we were in tears <laughs> laughing <laughs> um I've been with my husband since I was 21 and from a woman's perspective ladies I just want to say he's not lying to you and I sit and I ask my qu my husband long before even hearing about you very gruesome and personal personal questions and I'm very honest with myself about what I need to change about myself or what do you like mm -hmm. about this and so listening to you I'm like maybe I just think like a guy or is Kevin just not all that wrong and more right but it's women don't want to hear a man telling them and uh, growing up with a Puerto Rican Dominican mom and then being around and then my father's black but then being around my black side of the family I do see the difference in <sighs> for lack of better words, how a black mother raises their daughters that grows in a single home versus a Hispanic woman that raises them. Yeah, let me, let, me, let, me, let me step in front of this bullet for you right now. Because there are all kind of bullets coming at you right as soon as you said that, definitely. Here's what it comes down to. And I don't blame black women for this. No, and I don't. I don't blame I'm black women. Black. I don't, I, I, when you don't, it is, it's, we're not used to seeing black men in a position of respect, responsibility, and being right. So the things that I say are controversial more so because I'm a black man. Um, versus if they were, like some of the things if I were Dr. Phil or Joe Rogan or somebody else would be more easily acceptable than coming from me. And I can't change that. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is we need to be able to change that because it needs to become more commonplace to where our women can see our men on the same level as they see anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I take a lot of stuff. I don't, yeah, I, I know my name is everywhere now. Have um, you, ever, sorry to cut you off, have you ever considered, I heard you, I think just tell another one, like you purposely have the delivery that you have, like you want, you want to step on some toes, you, that it, like it's necessary it's, it's, it's necessary at times it's necessary at I, I don't do anything without a reason so i'm never just doing stuff to be provocative or it, right it's always thought out so um most people don't recognize that if i'm doing something just just give me a second i'll get there 
Uh, if you watch my content, sometimes it may seem like I'm all over the place. Like, what the hell is he talking about? And next thing you know, 13 minutes later, I tie all the points together. Mm -hmm. uh, my ultimate point is to get women to understand where the very men that they want are coming from and get men to understand that just like we got bad information, right. women got bad information too. And in order to get anywhere, we're both going to have to give each other a certain amount of grace and mercy and good faith because we're building this thing while we're flying it and we're all broken. And mm. good faith is more important than anything else. And if if both men and women in our community can start looking at each other with as human beings with uh, fundamental respect, like every other group of people, we're, we're far more willing to give each other a chance versus just writing each other off. So that, that and selflessness is the word that I would use. Like if both of us are selfless with each other, then you have no nothing but room to win. He's doing everything for you and you're doing everything for him. And that's what's lacking heavily I'll, in our I'll, Evan, I would, I would take, I would take, and that's, and, and that's like, uh, that's a 201 or a 301 class. I'm just taking one, I'm taking English 101 right now. Oh, okay. Sim simple respect. Can, can you get respect from men and can you smile at brothers? Okay. We got history 101, English 101, uh, science for non-majors, just the basics. This is basics. We can get to our coursework and our, and our degree pan after we get the basics out of the way because we didn't get it and there's no way for adults to get that um and oh. I, I'm, I'm not willing to i'm not willing to write off an entire group because we didn't get it where we should have got it right no i agree and i think there's a huge even talking to my friends and like i said i was just out having drinks with my sisters and the men and the women brought your name up and i was like oh, <laughs> just saw you maybe the end of March on um, on Shade Room, and then I saw you more in April, and I was like, okay, mm. follow him and see what he's talking about. And right. so we've enjoyed it. But then I hear even my own sisters, they didn't like the delivery. But when they, I started breaking it down, what you're really saying, I'm like, you have to get your. It's stinging because he's stepping on your toes. He's ta he's talking about you like mm -hmm. what you're saying to the other person. But, but a lot of times, women think they want marriage they think they want the relationship but really you want a wedding mm -hmm. you want a person that's going to take care of you but you don't really want him telling you anything you don't want him mm -hmm. to tell you what to do you don't want him really as a part of your life i've even had friends joke and say i want the husband but get me a separate house because oh i had somebody i was gonna bring on the show for that and it's a very it was a and I, I did a, what was it Carrie Hilson um that she was in the, in the news recently talking about I could be married and live separately That's and you know what look um I'm not foolish enough to believe that we're going to go back to Mayberry RFD they're going to be different kinds of relationships yeah but so at the end of but at the end of the day we got to be together in some form so it's yeah. funny that you see me everywhere that's crazy <laughs> well thank yeah. you for watching I appreciate it's not